In today's show, we're looking back at players who have been underperforming in the NBA. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore b-ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. We are here to look at players in, normally in this slot. We'll be calling it buy low trades, right? But trade deadlines have passed in the vast majority of leagues. If your league still has... An ability to trade, then take this as buy lows. But this is just also a show we're going to be looking at underperforming players. Why they might be down. Can we expect them to continue to be down? What can change? And how that impacts your hunt in the playoffs. So let's talk about that right now. And let's start with category leagues. And let's go to Fart and Will Barton, who, you know, without Jamal Murray, we thought, oh, maybe, maybe he steps up. Uh, No, 265th ranked player over the last three games. That's obviously uh, pretty poor. Struggled a little bit since Aaron Gordon's arrived. In fact, over the last month, Barton is the 160th ranked player. He's averaging 12 points per game with 38% shooting, hitting under 80% from the line. He's giving you only three assists, 12 points. Is that worth holding on to? You hope that a little bit improves in terms of the shooting numbers, that he starts hitting more than near 40% of his twos or 36 he's hit over the last three games. You hope that without Jamal Murray, the assists go up, but they've actually gone down. The steals have been pretty disappointing. He hasn't blocked a shot in two weeks. The usage isn't isn't high. It's it's well down. Again, we have to make we have to make decisions, hard decisions about what we do in the playoffs. Now, the four games this week do, do that does help Barton, but the production sure doesn't. It's not good. Um, yeah, you, I, th- I think maybe he can be like a top one twenty player for the week. But with how he's going, like you, you've got to make some hard decisions. The big thing here is the shooting, though. Like this is a guy who is not a particularly good shooter, but I wouldn't say that he's a thirty-eight percent shooter. So I do think there is some pretty significant scope for that to improve. He's also a guy that maybe we see an uptick in assists, maybe we don't. But I think he's better than this, and I'm not the biggest Will Barton fan, as most people would know. Let's talk about this bloke, John Morant. It's been bad, man. It's it just hasn't been good. Um, he's the 128th ranked player this season, but that's not the whole story. 209th over the last week, 190th over the last two weeks, 179th over the last month, 164th over the last two months. Now, if his name wasn't Ja Morant, if he wasn't someone that no matter what he did, scratched his balls, you know, opened his eyes wide and, and smiled and it got on ESPN, like we wouldn't be having any second thoughts about like, yeah, giving him the Jack Armstrong. Get that garbage out of here! But his name's Ja Morant. He's the Rookie of the Year. And it's time we all admit it. He's been terrible for fantasy this year. Like, really, really bad. No steals. 1-3. His scoring's been all right. Not that much above average. Assists down from last year. Doesn't block shots. Can't hit field goals. Can't hit free throws. He's been bad. Um... The Grizzlies, they have four games this week. We have three quality games. Sorry, two quality games. They're not particularly good. He can be better than this. He can be a better free throw shooter than what we've seen over the last month or so, and it has started to improve. He can be a better overall shooter. But 44% from the field, sorry, 44% from two and 29 from three over the last four games is hurting. He can get, he can be better in terms of his assists, but usage is dropping as well. I think there is room for him to be better, but I would not put my money on Ja Morant being a top 100 player the rest of the way. I, I would not do that at all. Um, it's been it's been a significant struggle for him, and you know, while he is underperforming, I am not um, I'm not expecting him to be significantly better. And honestly, if you wanted to drop him, I, I don't think it's the wrong move. Let's talk Rowan Barrett, who is the 148th ranked player this season which is borderline 12-team rosterable. The fact that he scores 17 points per game puts him in the mix, and then everything else is either 
where everything else literally is below average. He's got a negative Z score in every other category apart from points. But it has improved as the season has gone on. And over the last month, he's 110th. It's not a huge improvement, but he's been able to hit some more threes. He's been able to get a little bit more in terms of steals. But still, everything remains below. Most things remain below average. The last week, it's gotten worse. He's under 14 points per game. He's shooting 37% from the field, including 38% from two, which is obviously horrendous. And that 40% three-point streak, which has lasted... He shot 46% from three over the last three months, yet still is only at 47% from the field. That's that's a worrying sign. But that has dropped off over the last week. Um, look, Barrett can be better than what he's shown this last week. He can score better. He, look, he can be that 17, 18-point per game scorer. We've seen that last year and this year. But given the... I don't know. I don't know what the right term is. It's just a lack of production in literally every other area. Um, you know, we we shouldn't have the highest hopes for him. Three games this week is obviously not ideal either for Barrett. Um, I I think we need to. I I do think we need to hold, but I also don't think we need to be viewing him as an as an elite option. He is a back end player, and really, it's a a points a points specialist at this point. Guys, this episode is brought to you by Locker Room. Locker Room is the first social audio platform made for sports fans. The app is free to download, and once you're in, you can talk with me, other fans, athletes, and insiders in real time about your favorite team or sport. Now, normally I'm hosting Locker Room shows on Friday. Didn't uh, do last week's show, so I apologize for that. It's the perfect place to start or join conversations about the NBA, and you'll find fans just like you on Locker Room for watch parties, debates, post-game breakdowns, and of course, reacting to big news or rumors. So be sure to join me on Friday. We'll get it done this Friday, uh, and I'll be hosting that room, Talking Fantasy Basketball. So go download the Locker Room app now, currently available on all iOS devices. Be sure to create a profile, link your Twitter, and join the NBA group for the latest league updates. Follow me at Josh Lloyd 48 to be notified when my room goes live. I know you won't want to miss it. I'm planning on being live on Friday, and I can't wait to hear everyone's thoughts about fantasy basketball and how they're going in the playoffs. I'll see you there. Locker Room is changing the way that we talk sports. After Rowan Barrett, it's just a parade of guys that I've tended to think are overrated at points, apart from the last week, which we'll get to soon. But Colin Sexton struggling. 161st ranked player over the last week, 115th over the last two weeks, and unfortunately, it's getting back to bad Colin Sexton habits. Over the last, let's use the last two weeks where he's 115th. He's still averaging 26 points per game. So you look at it and go, shit, that's a good start, right? 26 points, that's excellent. We love it. We're all about it. We're all here for it. It's inspirational. Love this scoring. It's great. But then what the hell else is happening? 1.6 triples. Like, that's a fart in the mouth. Three rebounds. Come on, mate. 3.6 assists. Like, 0.4 steals. That's two steals in five games. There's where your problem creeps in. One block in five games. And then your forty-seven percent from the field is fine, but it's below average. And then eighty-three from the line is really good. So he's really good in that area. So it's been a bit of a dip. So why is it dip from where he's been this season? Well, the big reason is you know, the assists have dropped a little bit. The scoring is up somewhat. You know, the, the, everything else is the same. It's just the steals. He's gone from one point one to zero point four. Now he's a guy that has struggled in the past for steals. He averaged point five as a rookie. He doubled that for a second-year player to average one. That's what double half is. And then he was at to 1.1 this year. And that's what's yeah, keeping him from being a guy that's outside the top 100 to being inside the top 75. It's literally as simple as that. So I, I do think that those steel numbers can come back up for the Padawan and then he'll be fine. But that, that's really what's holding him back at the moment. And yeah, this guy. Maximum Derek. He was starting to put together some good numbers. 102nd, 105th ranked player over the last two months, which is basically post All-Star break. Still, the shooting is way off. And this is a guy that's like a 47, 46% guy over the last, or over his entire career. But 40% from the field has held him back. But the last week, we're down here. 157th ranked player, Derek White is. 16 points. But the problem is, is so much of his value is in the fact that he gets defensive stats. No steals in four games. This is a guy that's like a 1.8 steal per game player with one block per game, which is which is obviously excellent, right? Get, getting that out of a guard, getting one block and, and a steal. We, we hope for more steals, but getting that one block is important. He's still averaging 16 points, but missing steals, like not getting a single steal in the last week has hurt a lot. And then shooting 41% from the field has hurt a lot. If that comes back to one steal and 46%, then he's a top 80 player. So that's really what's fallen off. Now, my confidence in White getting the shooting right this season has, is not there. I just, I just, we haven't seen it and it just isn't there. 
So I don't have confidence in that. And until I see it consistently, I won't believe it. But I do believe that he can get more than zero steals. Like, I'm pretty sure that's going to be able to change for Derek as we move forward. The scoring's fine. The assists, they're never going to be really peaking this year with DeRozan and DeJounte handling the ball as much as they do. Um, the scoring and the usage and the minutes, all that stuff is fine. It's just the lack of steals and, and the field goal percentage that's dropped him way back here. Let's look at some points for these guys now. McCall Bridges has had a bit of a stinker over the last week, 210th ranked player, but let's even push it back to the last two weeks where he's the 180th ranked player, where he's averaging just 20 fantasy points per game. He's at 26 for the season, so it's not a season-long malady. It's just that he's had some real weird ones. He had that... Um, that that those games where he barely played, he had that one fantasy point game in 20 minutes. He had 16 points in 28 minutes last game. He had a five point game in 20 minutes. So some real outlier stinker type performances from McCall Bridges, who is obviously much better than this. He's averaging six real life points in that time with three boards and 1.3 assists. It's fair to say outside of his steals, which are way up, everything is down across the board. Interestingly, he's averaging just 0.9 steals this season. Now, that is way up uh, you know, over the last week and over the last month. It's up to 1.4, which is more in line with his numbers. So I, I do think that there is some significant improvement coming here from Bridges, but it's not hard to improve over averaging 17 fantasy points. But in a points league, shallower, t- 10, shallow 12, if you need to make a call on a bloke who's struggling, yeah, Bridges' points league upside isn't that high. And you've got to consider him uh, at least marginally expendable. Let's talk about D'Angelo Russell. Since he's returned, he's the 107th... Well, that's not true. Sorry, he's the 101st ranked player. Um, And it's getting worse. The minutes are going down somehow. He's not pushing to 30 minutes at all. He's averaging 20 points over the last four games. 22 minutes, 13 and four with one rebound. One rebound a game. They are just not... Now, the usage is great, 32% usage. They are just not giving him big minutes. And is that the plan for the rest of the year? Do they envisage him as a sixth man? I really fail to see that. But now I'm not the biggest Anthony Edwards fan, but to me, he's by far a key, a more key piece to their future than Russell is. Um, So maybe they're just saying, we only want one high-volume chucker out there, and that's Edwards. And we'll play him alongside a Rubio and then try and find some other point guards in other areas. And Russell can be a Jordan Clarkson-ish sixth man. I think there is a real worry about that. But I also believe that he'll play more than 22 minutes a night moving forward. And he'll probably average more than four assists per game moving forward. So that 20 fantasy points over the last week from D'Angelo probably can push to 26, 27, 28 yeah, relatively comfortably. And they there is three games only this week, but I, I do think that He's not a guy that we're dropping just yet, but that's giving me some hope that the minutes do come up, which is far from a guarantee. A guarantee. Tyrese Halliburton. It's been rough stuff here for Tyrese. Now, a much better category league player than points league guy. He's 95th for the season, but the last month, he's under 26 fantasy points. He's 23 over the last two weeks. The minutes have come down to 28 a game. Now, of course, over those last seven games, they've won one. Um, I, I couldn't tell you if that's tied in with Halliburton playing less minutes or moving to the bench, whether they're worse because of it. I, I can tell you it's because that is why. But his scoring's down, his efficiency's down. Um, he's still getting steals, but he's just not getting volume. He's just not getting enough minutes. And again, for a guy that we've seen drop off the way he has, the minutes fall away. It's very hard to consider that with three games this week in a points league. It might be something you need to consider to move on from. With the way that he's playing, with only the three games, with in the fantasy playoffs, he can get better, clearly. He can score more and he can play more minutes. But there's a dickhead in charge over there. So, yeah, how much do we trust Luke Walton to do the right thing? The answer to that question in all facets should be never, never, never trust him to do the right thing. Let's talk as Gordon. Um, he's been better in points leagues than category leagues this year. 29 fantasy points and 89th ranked player. Since joining Denver, it's fair to say it's been shithouse and it's getting worse. 116th ranked player over the last month. Yet over the last two weeks, he's down to 21 fantasy points, which puts him fairly and squarely outside the top 175. He's playing 26 minutes a night, averaging under 10 real-life points, under two, under three assists per game. He gets no steals and blocks, and that's you know, after that hot start in Denver, that's faded way away. He's not handling the ball like he was in Orlando. He's not rebounding the ball like he was in Orlando. He's not scoring like he was in Orlando. He's not playing the minutes he was like in Orlando. Now, maybe we can see that start to push up without Jamal Murray now, and we get to see um, 
you know, some some increase in his in his production and in, in, increase in his uh, efficiency. And he had sixteen and nine the first game without Murray, and then eight and two in the next one. I wouldn't be putting my faith in a bloke that has let me down for years and years and years. And who Denver, whenever he is always the guy out of that starting five that when they need to bench someone, he is the guy that gets his minutes reduced. Um, I wouldn't be feeling uh, supremely confident with him as we move forward. He can be better than this. I feel confident about saying that, but I don't feel supremely great about him improving. Devin Booker, 87th ranked player over the last week. But before we talk about Devin Booker, I'm going to tell you about Rock Auto because they're not ranked 87th in online car parts manufacturers or suppliers, they're ranked number one. Because why would you go into a local chain store to order a part from your car? It's a waste of your time. It's also a waste of your money because these local chain stores, they have different pricing tiers for professionals or for do-it-yourselfers. Why don't you just give them your credit card and the little three digits on the back and say, go to town, do what you want. With rockauto.com, they're a family business serving auto parts customers online for 20 years. So go to rockauto.com for a shop for auto and body parts from hundreds of manufacturers. They have everything from engine control modules and brake parts to tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. And best of all, those prices at rockauto.com are always reliably low, and they are the same for professionals and do-it-yourselfers. Why would you spend up to twice as much for the same parts? Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck and write locked on in their how did you hear about us box so that they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Let's talk Devin Booker. Like McCall Bridges, has been a bit of a drop-off. Under 30 fantasy points for Devin over the last week. 29 minutes, 18 real-life points. There's your kicker, right? The scoring's just down. The usage is fine. The scoring's off. And the minutes are down because the Suns have been involved in some pretty significant blowouts. So he's played 22 minutes in one game, 27 minutes in the other. And he had 12 and 15 points in those games. Like There's, there's your reason. So it's, that's, that is as simple as, as it gets. Now, he hasn't been particularly great this year in points leagues. He was top 30 in three consecutive seasons. He's outside the top 40 this year. But you know, that 37, 38 fantasy point mark is a realistic expectation for Booker, not this dude dropping in 29 points in 29 minutes. He's a 33-minute-a-night guy who should be getting 37 fantasy points, and I think that's going to bounce back. There's just been a couple of really weird games here for Booker over the last week that has dropped his production right down. Guys, That'll do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on Odyssey. And then on YouTube, hit subscribe, ring me old bell, hit the ding give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.